Hey, what's up, everybody? I wanted to come on here this morning and just celebrate something with you. Today is Monday, and normally I take off. I try to relax, try to recuperate from the weekend uh, with the production of our ministry, whether I'm preaching it live or preaching it and pre-recording it and pre-producing it and all of that stuff, uh, especially during this COVID-19 season. Uh, I wanted to come on today because I have been inspired by you. Yesterday's message that was entitled The Power of the Garbage Can has had a phenomenal response. Phenomenal. Ever since it aired at 9 a.m. yesterday, even this morning when I was getting up, responses were still coming in. And I just wanted to come and celebrate something with you that I know for a fact should be celebrated. Since we've been going through this uh, isolation and social distancing where the church is not met physically, uh, every Sunday, Every Wednesday, every week, we have experienced a growth in salvations. We've experienced a growth in rededications. Hold your seat on this one. We've also experienced a growth in membership. Unbelievable. My wife and I were talking about this yesterday, uh, just really giving God praise and paying homage to just how God moves uh, in a time where some are not experiencing what we're experiencing. And this is why we celebrate. We celebrate God. We celebrate his power. We celebrate the fact that we believe that it's a testimony and a testament that the Freedom Church is the modern day church for the modern day world. And we've been positioned for such a time as this. And I just wanted to come and celebrate with you because yesterday you uh, watched the sermon, you watched the service as you've done the last three or four weeks. And again, you shared the service and the sermon over and over and over again. So there's a ripple effect. There's a reverberation that is happening. Uh, and people are discovering the Freedom Church who did not know we existed. And the question continues uh, to be echoed. Where have you guys been? And we've been here, <laughs> been here doing the work, doing the due diligence, been here being focused on what God has called us to do. Uh, and focused on being who God has called us to be more than anything. So I wanted to celebrate that with you today. So many of you are inspired and you're being electrified and being ignited by what you're hearing. That message yesterday, uh, it did something. It did something that uh, only God deserves the credit for. Uh, be, because uh, what I'm hearing and seeing uh, is just absolutely phenomenal. So today I wanted to come and follow up from that particular sermon. I wanted to follow up uh, because many of you are really being, like I said, ignited and transformed. And I wanted to share a powerful word with you today uh, from Romans, the sixth chapter, verses, uh, just verse 23. We'll just start there. Uh, simple passage, familiar passage. But when I tell you this thing is loaded with revelation, uh, it's absolutely just power packed. It says this for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. Now, this is a familiar passage. And most of the time when it's read or talked about, I think we make a mistake of packing it together and not really extrapolating all of the wonderful nuggets that are in this verse. And I want to share some with you, starting with the first part says, for the wages of sin is death. Here's what I want to bless you with. When you hear the word wages, you must automatically think work. When you hear the word wages, you must automatically think about labor. Here's what the Bible says, that sin is a laborious activity. Oftentimes, sin is promoted as fun and, and exciting, and it can be that. Uh, there are some things that uh, we have no business doing that God has told us not to do that, quite frankly, at the moment, at the time, they are filled with fun. I've been saying for years, though, one of the dangers of fun is that it is the beginning of funeral. <laughs> I'll say that again for somebody that might have missed it. One of the dangers of fun is the beginning of funeral. What do you mean, Pastor? Spell the word funeral. F U N. E-R-A-L. You cannot spell funeral without first spelling fun. And I'm not trying to say that all fun leads to death and all fun is bad. No, absolutely not. Uh, 
but I am saying that some fun is a gateway to your funeral. That'll teach and preach. Some fun is a gateway to your death, especially if that fun is what God has labeled or categorized as sin. Now, God says he wants us to be very cognizant of something, and I love how God makes it really clear that he's not mad with us. He's not angry with us. He's not trying to catch us doing bad. He's not trying to punish us. God simply comes on the scene and says, I just want to explain something to you. I want to explain how the world works. I want to explain how the universe works. I want to explain to you how sin works. God says sin pays. Hmm. Sin pays. What does it pay? It pays wages. Now, the word wages denotes something someone has worked for, something someone has earned. Here's what I want you to remember today. When we talk about sin, we must look at sin as we look at a regular job. A person that goes to a regular job, clocks in, they work, they clock out, and they do that day after day after day. At the end of a work cycle, there is a paid check. And that person is paid for their work. What are they paid? They are paid wages. It's not a gift. It's not something that a company just gives you because they felt generous. No, no, you actually earned it. Here's what God wants you to understand about sin, is that anything that comes as a result of sin, you can't blame God. Hmm. Hold your seat for my religious people and you can't blame the devil. Mm. Now, I know that probably ruffles some feathers because many churches have become proficient in blaming the devil for just about everything. We blame him for stuff that he has no responsibility for, but he'll take it because he just loves being credited for things that you do and things you bring on yourself. One of the things I teach consistently at the Freedom Church is that we must all take ownership we must all take ownership for our conscious choices, and we must all take ownership for our diabolical decisions. Now, it's easy to blame the devil, but if you really want to grow, you really want to prosper, you really want to transform, you must acknowledge, you must accept, you must embrace the responsibility of your choices and your decisions. So the wages of sin is death. But God says, listen, that's the bad news. Let me give you some good news. Let me juxtapose wages against something that you're really going to love. He juxtaposes wages against a gift. For it says, for the wages, something you work for, of sin is death. The gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus. Now, the gift of God is not something we earn. The gift of God is not something we work for. Uh, the gift of God is, is not something that uh, we have punched a clock and can demand at the end of a particular period, season, or cycle. No, God says, no, this is a gift. This is a gift from the gratuity of my heart, from me to you, because I love you, because I care about you. And this gift that comes from God is called eternal life, and we only get it, don't miss this, through Christ Jesus but we only get it if he's our Lord. See, that's what I love about Romans 6 and 23. I love about, I love how we can exegete the scripture and, and just really extrapolate it and pull it apart because you may have heard that there are many roads to God. There are many roads to heaven, that Jesus is just a person or just a prophet. He was just a good dude back in the day. No, the Bible says he is so much more than that. The Bible says that Jesus Christ huh, is the gateway to eternal life. In other words, we can't get to God unless we go through Jesus Christ because he's the gift. Now, I said all of that to say this today, that God loves you so much that he wants you to recognize that sin is not your friend. Yeah. And when I talk about sin, I'm talking about a life of sin. I'm talking about practicing sin every day, consistently, without any regard to God, any regard to God's word. You just sin because, hey, that's just what I do. Hey, it's what I like. You make excuses by, hey, we're all human beings. You know, we're all people of the flesh, blah, 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 blah. And God says, I don't want you to be deceived. I don't want you standing in heaven looking stupid. So let me drop some knowledge on you. Let me at least give you insight and intel. Now, what you do with it is up to you. 
I thank God that we serve a God that not only speaks to us spiritually, but takes the time to speak to us intellectually so that we will have no excuses if we stand before him, standing on the wrong side of the word of God. Now, I love Romans, the entire book, and I challenge you to read the entire book of Romans uh, in your leisure when you get time, but, but make it a goal because Romans is full of wisdom and knowledge. Specifically in Romans chapters one through three, the first three chapters of Romans, Paul declares that all humans are sinners. Yeah, Paul flat out says that all human beings are sinners. He says we're sinners simply because sin rules the entire person. So this is the danger of sin. This is the danger of living a life of sin. Sin rules the entire person. What do you mean, Pastor? Well. It, it rules our words, it rules our works, and sin rules our heart. That's the entire mainframe of man. That's the entire construct of a human being. Our words, our works, and our heart. And sin is very corrosive and erosive. It may start in a little area, but it is progressive like cancer. And the longer it is enjoyed and the longer it is ignored, mm, the more territory it consumes and it permeates your life. Now, we just read about the wages of sin being death in Romans 6 and 23. And sometimes people become disillusioned because we can sin and not die physically immediately. And oftentimes we become lulled into a sense of safety because we feel like, man, I've been doing this for a long time and I'm straight, I'm good. And we feel like we're getting away. We feel like there are really no consequences uh, to a life of sin. But what you must understand is that death uh, works in its duality in the spirit realm as well as in the physical realm. So you may be physically alive living a life of sin, but you may not be paying attention to the damage that sin is doing to the other areas of your life. What kind of damage? Well, the death to your peace, the death to your joy, the death to your, your consciousness. The Bible says our consciousness can become seared by sin. The death to your aspirations. I know some people, man, they're so involved in various sins that they have no goals other than to pursue their sins. Wow. Talk about a sad death. See, there are more than one way to die. There's more than one way to die. You could be dying while you're living, and many people are, if you're practicing a life of sin. Here's what Jesus comes to do. Jesus comes to give us a beautiful gift, a gift called salvation. This gift of salvation allows us to make a decision. I call it the most intelligent decision any human being can possibly make on this side of heaven. A decision to submit to God's authority. A decision to order your steps by God's word. A decision to allow the word of God to work in you so that over a period and a course of time, you become what God created you to be. See, Paul concludes that all have sinned. Paul concludes that all fall short of the glory of God. And I got to tell you something. I see no lies there. All have sinned. All fall short. Here's the difference, though. When you name the name of Jesus, when you accept Christ as your Lord and your Savior, See, there's a difference between him being your Lord and a difference between him being your Savior. Savior simply means, okay, you acknowledge the works of Christ. Died on the cross, rose from the dead. I acknowledge him as my Savior. But he can be your Savior and not be your Lord. How? Because Lord means that you allow him to lead and guide and govern your life, your choices, your decisions, and your behavior. When you allow him to be your Lord, it says that you listen to his authority. You listen to his principles. You listen to his perspective. And you're not just a hearer of the word, but you are a doer of the word. That's the difference. Does it mean that even after salvation, you won't sin? Because here is the truth that many don't want to share. 
that even after salvation, even after making Jesus your Lord, there will be moments and times where you will sin. That's a fact. But you don't lose your salvation because you sin. Not when Jesus is your Lord and your Savior, because it's not your lifestyle. It's not something you practice. It's not something that you embrace. No, 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 no. It is something that you fight against, something you resist, and something that you refuse to accept as a part of who you are. See, that's the difference between the sinner who does not embrace Jesus as Lord and Savior and the believer who does embrace Jesus as Lord and Savior. Why? Because we all have sinned and we all fall short of the standards of God. Now, I got to tell you something. Without the restoring, rejuvenating, resuscitating work of the Holy Spirit, Folks, let me be honest with you. We are all incapable of having a right relationship with God. Oftentimes I am saddened because the Holy Spirit has been so mislabeled and misused and mispromoted that when people think of the Holy Spirit, they think of something that makes people jump and shout and huck and buck and run around the church. And some even think that the Holy Spirit is something that makes people foam at the mouth when they say Jesus over and over and over again. And that saddens my heart because that is a very ignorant understanding of who the Holy Spirit is. It's a very ignorant understanding of what the Holy Spirit does. The Holy Spirit is a gift to us. It is the part of God that seals us until the day of redemption, until the day that Christ returns. It is the power, the dunamis power, the explosive power of God that takes residency in our spirit mainframe. See, without that, you and I, we cannot have a relationship with God. So not only must you allow Jesus to be your Lord and Savior or Savior and Lord, you must also allow the Holy Spirit to have a place in your life where it works to restore you, rejuvenate you, and resuscitate you. Resuscitate you from what? Rejuvenate you from what? Restore you from what? Life, <laughs> life's decisions, even sin. See, that's what the Holy Spirit is there for. He is that constant ready restore, that constant ready rejuvenator, that constant ready resuscitator. This is why we can say, that no weapon formed against us can prosper. This is why we can say that a righteous man falls seven times, but he gets up. It's not in your own power that you get up. It's in the power of the Holy Spirit that you get up. Because when you fall, he restores you. He resuscitates you. He rejuvenates you. And he allows you to have that right relationship with God from one day to the next day to the next day. Yeah, see, I'm, I'm pushing something and I hope you're catching it and receiving it. Without the Holy Spirit, we won't seek God. We won't. It's not in our nature. It's not, in, it's not in the nature of the human being to seek God. It is not normal and natural for the human side of you to desire God. Truth be told, it is normal and natural for the human side of us to hate God, to abhor God, to flee from God. What did Adam and Eve do immediately after, after they disobeyed? In Genesis, they ran and they hid. Human nature at its best. See, the Holy Spirit, it calls us to seek God. It reminds us when we do wrong. It reminds us when we're about to do wrong. It is that, that voice of truth, that voice of reason, that voice that leads us through temptation. It leads us when we're in temptation. But without the Holy Spirit, folks, we will not see God. None of us will. Instead, we will willfully turn against God without the Holy Spirit because without the Holy Spirit, we have no respect and no reverence for God. And let me tell you something. That's what we see in the world today. We see in the world today a growing trend of people who willfully turn against God, willfully disrespect God, willfully have no regard for biblical truth and willfully take Everything that God said we shouldn't do, and they turn it upside down and say it's okay to do. Some even say that God made us to do things that God told us not to do. And when you hear that and see that, you just need to be aware that that is what happens when the Holy Spirit is being rejected 
and the Holy Spirit is not being received because the Holy Spirit allows us, it empowers us, it encourages us, it calls us to seek God. But I got good news. Here's the good news. God will not be outdone. God in his grace and his mercy makes sinners right with him. When we believe, don't miss this, when we believe that Jesus Christ sacrificed his life, when we believe that he shed his blood and we believe that Jesus saved us from our sins, God in his grace and mercy in that moment makes sinners right with him. God makes sinners right with him because we give Jesus his rightful place. Mm. I got to say that again. God makes sinners right with him because we give Jesus his rightful place. This is why you cannot be deceived by the trend that says Jesus is just this and he's just that, but he's not Messiah. He's not Lord. He's not King of Kings. He was just a good dude in the good old days. See, that is the grand deception of Satan because Satan knows who Jesus is and he knows that if you ever embrace and accept Jesus as Savior and Lord, he knows that God will make a sinner right in his sight and then you get to work out your own soul salvation in fear and trembling and that word fear does not mean to be scared, it means to have reverence for and respect for the Almighty God. I'm going to encourage you today as I get ready to close to seek the one who seeks to save, not the one who seeks to enslave. Ooh. Boy, I'm telling you, I'm hitting you like a smooth criminal today. Let me say that again. Seek the one who seeks to save, not the one who seeks to enslave. God is the one who seeks to save. Satan is the one who seeks to enslave. Why? Because he already knows his destiny is doomed. And he wants some company in his misery when this is all said and done. How do I seek God, Pastor Troy? How do I seek the one who saves and not the one who seeks to enslave? Real simple, folks. Seek God through Jesus Christ. Seek God through Jesus Christ. And here's what I can guarantee you. You will be restored. You will be rejuvenated. And you will be resuscitated. I don't care how bad it is. I don't care how far in the hole you've gotten yourself. I am a living witness that God is a lifter. God is a redeemer. God is a rescuer of those of us who have ransacked our lives. I'm a living witness. So I want to encourage you today. Seek God through Jesus Christ and be born again. Be born again into the new life. Does that mean you're going to be perfect? Absolutely not. Does it mean you're never going to make another mistake? Absolutely not. Does that mean that you're never going to sin again? Probably not. What it does mean, though, is that you are covered by the blood of Jesus Christ, which is your spiritual insurance. Hebrews 3 and 15. I said it yesterday in yesterday's sermon. Uh, the power of the garbage can. And I want to repeat it today as I get ready to close. Hebrews 3 and 15 says this. Today, I love this verse. Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as you did in the rebellion. God says, if you hear him through me today, if you hear God speaking to you, I'm very low key today. I'm not loud. I'm not shouting. I just wanted to kick it with you, just wanted to chat with you. And God says, if you can hear me through this young brother, yeah, 51 is young. I don't care what nobody says. If you could hear me through Pastor Troy today, don't harden your heart. Don't make excuses. Don't put up the wall. God says, let me in. Don't continue to be a rebel. Don't continue to run. Let me in. Seek the one who seeks to save not the one who seeks to enslave. I want to lead you into a prayer of salvation, what I call the prayer of transformation. If you've never prayed it before, if you've strayed away from God, you allowed your relationship to expire, uh, well, let's renew it today. Let's rejuvenate it. Let's resuscitate it today. Simply repeat these words with me. And I want you to say them uh, and believe every single one of them. Say, Father, I believe in my heart and I confess with my mouth that Jesus Christ is your son, that Jesus Christ came, died, 
for my sins and rose from the dead so that I might have access to salvation. I receive Christ today. I receive Jesus today as both my Savior and my Lord. And from this day forward, I denounce sin and I cleave and I cling to your word, your will, and your way. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen and amen. Powerful time this morning. Wanted to come and just encourage and celebrate with you uh, because this is a phenomenal time, especially if you are walking with Christ. Shh. We are having a different experience than the entire world. Listen, if today was a day of salvation or transformation or rededication or inspiration or motivation or any of those shuns, <laughs> do me a favor. Text the number at the bottom of the screen. Uh, let us know the decision that you've made today. Send us your name and your email address, and we will send you some follow-up information, your next step information, what you need to do. If you don't have a church home and you've been searching, you've been looking for the perfect beat. Well, we don't have the perfect beat. We don't have the perfect church, but we have the perfect environment where imperfect people can come, gather, fellowship, learn, and grow and become what God has called them to be. It's called the Freedom Church. It's called Freedom for a reason, because if you don't have freedom, everything else is a waste of time. You're searching for a church and you're near the Warner Robins, Georgia area, Texas. Send us the information. Say, I want to become a member and a partner. We don't just want members. We need partners. People who put their hand to the plow. People who are co-laborers. People who support it financially so that we can do the works of Christ and do greater works. And for those of you that are far away logistically, but you feel us spiritually and you want to be a part of this amazing movement, here in the city of Warner Robins, Georgia. Well, it takes the same number. It's what I call a digital member. You say, hey, I want to be a digital member. I want to be a DM. <laughs> I want to be a digital member of this movement. I feel it. I feel it. Real recognize it's real. Respond. Don't just watch. Don't just nod. Respond. And become a covenant partner of what God is doing. Because whatever God blesses us with, you are entitled to a portion of that. And let me tell you something, Freedom Church is on the launching pad, getting ready for a liftoff in just a matter of days. Something phenomenal, bigger than any of us could have ever imagined is about to happen right here from the city of Warner Robins. And wherever you are in this world, you can be a part and a partner of this prolific movement that God is spearheading and driving. We are just along for the ride. Oh, what a ride it is. Well, listen, I pray that you have a blessed day today. Uh, speaking of which, if you would like to have someone contact you for my ministry, also text that same number. Uh, I'm only one person and I can't respond to everybody. Uh, and if you're trying to reach me uh, through Messenger or Facebook, that is probably the worst way to try to reach me because I get thousands upon thousands of messages. And quite frankly, I just don't have the time uh, or the tenacity to go through all of those messages uh, because sometimes some of those messages are just ridiculous. They have nothing to do with God. They're not Christ-centered. Uh, they're people in their flesh <laughs> and I uh, have no interest in those type of invitations or messages. So I don't really do a lot on Messenger, but if you're serious and you want somebody from my ministry to contact you for prayer, for direction, for instruction, uh, hit us up at that same number. Just text us your name, your number, and say, I want, I want to speak to a minister of your ministry. I've got elders and ministers on standby. They're ready. They're ready. They've been trained by me. They study me. They watch me. I teach them, uh, and they have my spirit. But more importantly, they have the spirit of Christ. They have the spirit of God. They have the Holy Spirit. So listen, if you're needing some prayer, needing some, some insight, just want somebody to touch and agree with you. Hit us up at that number and we will have one of our finest elders, one of our finest ministers, uh, give you a call and pray with you. I love you. Praying for you. I'm excited about what God is doing. Let's dominate this day and every day that God gives us. Have a great day.